Okay, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, I am John Mason with the International Arizona International Film Festival. I welcome you to this uh, Zoom session on the making of Canyon del Muerto. The session is being uh, taped for Facebook replay, and so we can reach an unlimited international audience. Uh, and that's great. Uh, so thank you uh, and welcome. Uh, to all of you for attending. Uh, I'm still, uh, we're talking about the making of this great movie. Uh, I'm still kind of buzzed about last night. Uh, we uh, premiered, we world premiered the, the movie uh, at, the, at the great historic Fox Theater in downtown Tucson to a very rambunctious and receptive audience, large. Uh, it was a wonderful evening. And before we get on to the making of, I'm wondering if those present at the screening have any quick comments about uh, how you think the uh, the evening went, Mr. President Nez? How about you? Uh, it was exciting, and uh, from the questions that we received, uh, I think it was uh, a lot of interest in, to the Voorhees brothers, you know, bringing uh, the Navajo Nation uh, to the viewers was just awesome. Using our Navajo language, you know, our Navajo language helped win battles. Help in World War II, and to see that, that uh, highlighted on a uh, motion picture film uh, was was pretty awesome to see you last evening. So thanks, thanks guys, and thank you to Dr. Uh, Jumbo Finch for you know allowing this to take place in our community. And Kenny Deshay just just right next door. Rosanna, you were there, I believe, uh, and you actually asked a very interesting question toward the end of the Q&A. Would you like to comment about last night? <laughs> I thought it was great. You know, um, I got a lot of feedback of how beautiful the movie was, you know, just highlighting the actual Canyon de Shea monument and the whole story and how it evolved around the Navajo culture and history and being able to share the story, you know, of the, the Ann Morris and just being able to uh, see it and understand. I think it provided a lot of understanding for those that have questions in regards to Navajo culture and tradition. Like, why is it so important? Why do Navajos treat their traditional values in this fashion? You know, so I think this film really highlighted a lot of those topics. It shared it. It provided a real life example and showing the actual locations and the people involved and how they transgressed their stories with one another. It was just, it was a great overall experience. And I, I know we're very thankful to have um, shared this moment and highlight the Chinle chapter community, as well as the actual Navajo Nation. You know, it just highlights a big history and it's documented now forever. And we can share that story with lots of people, not just within the, the United States, but worldwide. And that's, that's the greatest accomplishment. So thank you, really appreciate it. Mr. Sully, you uh, were there uh, and uh, distinguished yourself on the panel. Uh, would you have a comment or two about uh, how you thought the night went? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it was just a, it was a wonderful night. Uh, I'm so glad that the president was there and uh, Rosanna was there. Um, just so, you know, just like Rosanna said, it, we definitely have documented our history, a part of our history. And uh, I believe that's a very important thing for our future generations to come. So I'm just very proud to have been part of uh, that production. The Voorhees brothers are just incredible individuals. And, you know, I just felt just a, an honor to be there and to be among such uh, amazing individuals. Thank you. And Linda, were you there last night? I, I was, sir. And uh, John, and, and, your, and your, 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 uh, your son had a great cameo and I heard you guys clap for him. So it's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it was an amazing night because being, um, I have uh, uh, Native American heritage, especially and interesting enough around Hispaniola, and seeing a documentary, if you will, but it was a featured film on the Native American, especially the Navajo, made me feel so much pride for where I come from. And seeing that um, and being a part of that with my husband, Vernon, being executive producers and, you know, Vernon uh, worked to the bone, making sure that the Voorhees brothers got their got the budget they needed and helped get that. But um, the real true story here are, are the Navajo Nation and how we were 
welcomed and we knew how uh, not to take advantage of that because that was sacred and 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 it was just an, an amazing combination last night so sitting back and watching it all come together and then all the players was uh i was very proud of everybody especially the Voorhees brothers because they brought this to life and brought this to president nez and the navajo nation and um it's just a part of my culture so it was very very i'm very proud of everything that happened uh, especially last night thank you so much and uh, you mentioned mr john Voorhees. john what did you think well i really enjoyed um the hearing after the film uh, premiered and all the reactions that people had um, in the moment. Um, I think that the panel discussion following um, with the president and with John and my brother uh, really got a lot of people thinking about what the heart of the film is really about. Um, yeah. I think that the uh, topics that we cover, um, you know, we knew going into it that these were really um, sensitive topics. We are talking about Navajo history and Anasazi history, and they need to be done. Uh, they need to be the histories need to be told in a way that's respectful. And also, um, you know, we want to actually show the full history. We want to show all the um, the uh, elements of what uh, exists inside of Canyon de Shea and Canyon del Muerto, especially. And that's of course the title of the film. Um, so hearing people's reaction to that subject matter being presented and then the discussion unpacking how we approach the subject matter, I think got a lot of people thinking about it. Um, and that's ultimately what we want to accomplish. And that's, that's success for us. If people are understanding what it is that all of our voices are coming up, combining together to say when we release this film. Um, so Cordy and I were very happy about that. We've heard a lot of really great positive feedback um, after the, um, well, it looked like a sold out screening um, in the Fox Theater. So uh, it was really, as you said, John, a, a very lively audience. And uh, we're just really excited for the future of this film and what's going to happen next. So it was, it was a very proud night. Thank you so much. And I, I know it's very dangerous to give a microphone over to Corte Borges. Uh, <laughs> I do my best. I, I will have to, have to ask him, of course. Uh, Corte, what, uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was wonderful. And it, it's so great to be with all of you now again. Uh, I already miss everybody. So it's just great, great to be reconnected here. It's like the night is still going. Um, but yeah, I want to echo uh, what what Linda and what John just said. Um, you know, it was really it was really special in that regard. Uh, when we arrived, you know, the line being around the block. I mean, I haven't seen a, a screening really that full in a long time. Uh, it was it was really nice to see that many people gather. Uh, for any film, let alone our film, uh, which was amazing. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a spectacular night. And, and to, to the major point, which we brought up last night on the panel, and, and we discussed in depth this idea of, you know, archaeology being uh, a, a force for bringing cultures together. I think that was so well um, visualized last night uh, with just the crowd that turned out and the diversity of the crowd and, and, uh, and, and you know, uh, really uh, everyone there to absorb this, this important story. So, I thought it honestly couldn't have gone any better. And it just, it feels so great uh, to be bringing the movie out in such a, a culturally appropriate way, but also really the most exciting way possible and just such a huge honor. And so thank you again, everyone for helping make it happen because it was, it was totally spectacular. And uh, we're just so excited about the next steps of the movie. It was indeed uh, without uh, be beating this drum uh, too much uh, harder uh, and more. It was wonderful for the festival. It was uh, an honor for us to showcase uh, the film and, and draw uh, highlights to many, many important aspects as our guests have just uh, announced. Let's uh, kind of move on. Um, we want to talk about the making of. Uh, there are hopefully lots and lots of people uh, looking in. Uh, if you have a question out there, uh, please go to your chat session on Zoom and type it in. I will be monitoring those. The format is we've got about an hour or so. We're already down to 50 minutes or so. We'll get, we're going to start it now. Uh, if you have a question, type it in. I'll be looking at it. And in uh, half an hour-ish, uh, I'll look at those and, and direct those questions to our guests. So uh, first of all, let me ask uh, just quickly, and I mean very quickly, and maybe we could start with Linda. Please tell us um, what you're doing uh, uh, currently and what, uh, what your role was in the film. Yes, hi. Uh, so I was uh, assistant to the executive 
director, if you will, my husband, <laughs> because I was actually the uh, in politics in Illinois. So I just retired in September, uh, but was able to be on set at Gallup when we had scenes there. And then we went across the water, if you will, to England and was actually an extra on accident. I didn't want to be an extra, but I ended up being an extra on accident. Um, enjoyed my time. But you know, one of the most amazing things about this film is one third of our executive producers or co-producers, I'm sorry, executive, yeah, executive producers, co-producers are women. We have Black, Hispanic, Native American, and Muslim. I mean, we have such a diverse group. Our youngest person's 20, and our probably our oldest is probably my mom. She's around in her 80s, but she's young. Um, it's the diversity that came together during COVID nonetheless, to raise the funds we needed to support this film was sheer brilliance by everybody that was involved. So yeah, so that's, uh, and presently I'm retired and hopefully um, La Via The Way production will be seeing a lot more movies and a lot more uh, funding there with the core team brothers in the future. Thank Amen. you so much. Uh, Rosanna, tell us a little bit about uh, briefly what you do and how did you get involved? Uh, what was your role in the film? Um, I was, um, I am the current Chinle chapter president. So I represent our Chinle chapter community and service area, um, which includes the Canyon de Shea and extends out towards Canyon del Murto area. So I was um, um, introduced to the Voorhees brothers through Mr. Sosi and um, we were able to collaborate and get um, the film details, what stages they were at um, during their filming process, the story of the film, how their relations are to the Navajo people and the, the Voorhees brothers approached our chapter uh, very respectfully asking for permission to uh, complete their filming within the Canyon de Shea. And they went through the process of being able to reach out to our local community members, our vendors, the Jeep tours, the community um, members that reside within or near the Canyon de Shea monument and just overall doing their research and just having their overall process um, go through our community members. So we invited them to um, our chapter meetings where there they presented the details of the film and detail to the people, answered questions, answered any concerns um, and overall, it provided them the approval to continue to uh, complete their film. And we we're very grateful for that because it helped um, during our COVID-19 pandemic, we had a large impact like everybody else in the world. And it gratefully um, assisted our members. You know, we saw the boost in our economy. We saw the, the mental and physical changes within the people um, when we came out and met the uh, film team and Corte and his brother, John, and Mr. Sosi, we were able to actually gather, sit, review details, and you could just feel the momentum within the filming team itself. And it was a great experience. And I'm very glad that on my end, we were able to provide that opportunity um, for the film industry and also for our people in the community. So overall, it was a very positive experience and it was great to have them on site. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sowie. Tell us how you got involved in the film and uh, what your role was. And uh, I see on your bio that you actually have uh, been involved in film for quite a long time. Um, and again, what did you do? What was your role in the film? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, so I started out as a just a liaison between the Navajo Nation and the production. So um, just to, you know, reaching out to President Nez and getting them to come together to meet and just let President Nez know what we were doing and also just seeking his approval and, and getting a, his help with that process. Uh, so that was my main role uh, within this within this film. And then later on, I just kind of progressed to a co-producer. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was just really an honor to, to be part of this film. And, you know, when, uh, like my bio says, several projects have rolled through, you know, my neighborhood where, where I live. And, and so when I asked these guys, you know, how basically they're going to go about the production and, and the questions that I always have for productions is, are you going to take care of the land? Are you going to, you know, make sure that, um, you're going to be respectful, and of course they were. They went above and beyond to make sure that they uh, heeded those warnings as far as just the, the land, the land usage, um, the culture, the language. Um, so I'm very grateful for for the Voorhees family. Um, they they definitely did an outstanding job, and 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 just being men of their word, a family of their word, 
you know, representing our people uh, tremendously well and uh, and taking care of the land. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just been a great experience. Thank you so much. Uh, and lastly, uh, we'll, we'll uh, obviously have the Voorhees and their involvement, uh, we'll discuss it uh, at major length, but I have to ask uh, Mr. President, uh, how did you, uh, you're there, you've got a million things you're doing and uh, you hear about this film. How did, uh, how did they rope you in? Well, you know, I, I appreciate, uh, you know, appreciate John Sosi and uh, Julius Elwood, of course, President uh, Jumbo Finch for, you know, uh, making sure that this film is culturally appropriate and to also have uh, the team there, the tourism uh, businesses, the tour guides, as well as working with the Navajo Nation program, like the Navajo Nation TV and film. You know, this, this is not my first rodeo, as they say. You know, we had, have had some motion pictures filmed here on Navajo, but this is the first, uh, first time that we're uh, embracing an independent film. And that is one highlight. You know, we, with Taft Black Horse, Ron Maldonado, you know, great Navajo leadership team uh, working with the Voorhees brothers. You know, it came out very well. And even the Navajo language, I, I was so uh, impressed with uh, West Studies Navajo too as well. So uh, there's uh, no uh, excuse for our younger generation to learn the language if, a Cherokee uh, can learn the Navajo language. So it was great. And I think it's gonna be encouraging to our Navajo youth to relearn their language. So great. Thank you so much. Okay, so one of the first things in, of course, the making of is uh, getting it ready to be made. Uh, so I'd like to ask Courtney and John probably, uh, that beginning is with the script and the story. How did the story, I mean, we know because you've told us that we, we go to Ann Morris's uh, writings, but we take that book and we end up with a, a wonderful movie. How did we go from the book to a script that you could uh, raise money for? Yeah, so, and it's interesting, and, and uh, thank you, John. Um, I started writing the script before, you know, really doing a direct adaptation because, you know, it was the books are very episodic and we needed to figure out kind of a three act structure for a two hour long movie. Uh, but the more, uh, the more information we got, the more letters that were uncovered. And it really was an uncovering process with the University of Colorado, uh, with Ben Gell, with the Morris family, you know, all these different dimensions. And so, yeah, this, the script really evolved over a multi-year process. And one of the other things that really influenced it too, was just all the different scouts to Canyon to Shea. We did, 24 scouts to Canyon to Shea over a three year period, just looking at various parts of the canyon, um, really wrapping our, our brain around the geography. And um, as, as the president said, and as Rosanna said, you know, we worked with, you know, even in the early stages of development uh, with, with many uh, local uh, land users in Canyon to Shea, many of which knew the Morrises, right? Or their, or their parents or their grandparents knew the Morrises or knew the Navajo crew or were family members with the Navajo crew who worked with the Morrises and doing those interviews. Uh, we met one land user who actually walked the Lindberghs down from the rim of the canyon, uh, you know, in, into the Morris camp and just getting all those stories. And so really, um, you know, just taking the time to put all that information together. And, you know, we first started with a 200 page script, you know, much longer script, which we had to whittle down to actually work out how to make as a feature film. And then, yes, so a, a lot of it, you know, in, in film financing and in film uh, in filmmaking, it's often a chicken and egg situation where you can have a great script, but you need the talent to get the financing and you need the financing to get the talent. And that's a really interesting dichotomy that you have to work out, you know, as you're building up to getting the film made. Uh, and we had our ups and downs, you know, this film went through uh, four different variations of financing before um, Linda and, and Vernon got involved and uh, Jerry Calvetti and uh, many John Moncton uh, and many of our, our senior uh, executive producers, but we, we bid it off in pieces of the equity that we raised the, and we say equity financing that's that's private independent financing that we raised was complemented by a very large tax credit out of the state of New Mexico, 
which paid for a, a massive chunk of the film's production and, and was really important for the making of the movie. But basically, you know, doing it in stages, right? Sorry, go ahead, John. Well, I'm saying, uh, so we have uh, your script and a package that I, I have to go back to uh, 22, 24 visits to the canyon. Yeah. I mean, I'd, uh, it, it, as Anne herself said at one point, every time she visited, it changed. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you could, I mean, just uh, just as a thing of beauty. Uh, but what what were you trying to refine and and dig deeper each and as you kept visiting? What were you trying to? Yeah, that's a great question, John. So, really, just narrowing the emotional journey of the character, right, um, through the various aspects of the archaeological experience in the canyon. And, um, and also, I, I mentioned the geography, but it's, it was really important that we don't uh, lose context for the audience, especially given the fact that there was no way we were ever going to be able to film the entire movie in Canyon de Chez. We had to get really clever about, okay, we need to shoot these scenes in the canyon because there's just no way we can do it anywhere else, right? You can't duplicate Tower House Ruin, right? You can't uh, duplicate um, you know, parts of Twin Trails or Spider Rock. Uh, various locations in the southern branch of Canyon de Chez. And then we felt, okay, camp scenes or smaller archaeological scenes we can do in another location and still maintain the atmosphere like we're in the canyon. Um, so all that was really important. And then, uh, and then just really breaking it down, we storyboarded uh, pretty much every frame in the movie. And John, this is a big part of the, the scouting process because any filmmaker will tell you, you know, you can only work out so much on the set. And time is literally money, especially during the COVID pandemic where so much of the budget was going to the COVID measures. Um, each hour is costing thousands of dollars. So we just had to have such a clear sense of, okay, this is exactly what we need to shoot when we're here. Especially, you know, we started filming in the fall and, and, uh, and Rosanna and, and the president and John can all tell you, you know, it gets dark out there really early in the fall. You know, your daylight is between about, you know, 10 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Uh, and, you know, with a, with, with a large crew, you got to really be on top of it and move as quickly as you can. So that's why all that was so important. Um, so we have this package and one of the very interesting things, and I think there were a couple of uh, questions about this uh, last night after the screening. Uh, there, there was a long and appropriately uh, long list of credits at the end of the movie and like 90% of those were producers. Right. <laughs> And uh, so what does a producer do? So, uh, well, uh, traditionally, typically, a producer is a money person. So uh, I think I read, maybe Richard talked about it, your budget was around $10 million. That's, that's kind of on the top end of, a, of an indie feature. Uh, that's a fair amount of money. Perhaps you could tell us uh, a little bit more about your method, about uh, how you raise money. Did you have a, did you, did you do uh, uh, presentations to the public? Did you uh, knock on the private doors? Did you, how did, how did you get that uh, money? I, I'm not, I don't yeah. want confidential stuff, but just what was your methodology in raising money? Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in and then Linda, I think you'd be, you, it'd be great to get your perspective on this too, from your work with Vernon and, and John as well. Um, so yeah, and to start with, that was just the equity raised for the film. So we actually aren't revealing right now what the grand total budget of the movie was with our tax credit, but yes, we raised close to $10 million in private equity financing for this movie. Um, and, it, and it was absolutely a process of, of just really building our network. We were fortunate, our previous film released with Netflix in 2016. So it gave us credibility as young filmmakers that we've done one movie, it was successful. Uh, all the investors made their money back. It was a profitable movie. It you know, had a limited theatrical release in Greece, then released Netflix and did really well. So that was enormously helpful. Having that credibility as a filmmaker is, is, is very important with raising money. But even that wouldn't get you as far as, as uh, what we did with this movie. What really happened, John, is we just brought such incredible people to the table who also were able to bring their friends and their fellow investors onto the movie as well. And, and Linda is probably in the best position to talk about this because Linda and her husband, Vernon, raised about 60% of the equity financing out of, out of their combined network. You're um, good. And that was yeah. part of it. So go ahead, Linda. Yeah, yeah. I, I think gonna, it's, it, it's- You're gonna be very John. interesting. You're gonna be very- uh, yeah. Uh, Popular, I know. <laughs> so, so uh, John, it's very interesting what happens. Vernon and I are people that think out of the box and create when there's nothing. We're business owners by heart. So we've opened up quite a few businesses. And what we basically uh, put it down to is that everybody who would like to uh, 
to take a, a stock in an independent film should have an ability, a doorway to walk through? And then how does that feel and how does that fit with their finances? And what we found is it's a lot easier to go after the 50,000, 100,000, um, 250,000 uh, range of people, especially with the uh, tentacles that both of us have. Like I said, I, I was in politics. My husband is up to quite a few businesses. So we have those contacts and that credibility to bring certain people to the table. And it, it does take a lot of hand-holding also just to explain the nuts and bolts and how to, how to develop a film and all the costs. I mean, what we saw on every day on the set, Vern and I were in the back saying, okay, Cordy, get the cut done, get it done, this scene. You only need X, because we knew how much money we were spending every hour on the hour. And John, uh, Cordy's brother, will contest to this because Vernon was, uh, I think he got in trouble by our, one of our scene guys because he went over and he had words with him saying, no, it, it, it's it. That's what we need to do. Um, because we, the money is valuable, right? And my husband likes to say, you know, the money is it, you know, he, he uses a different phrase I choose not to use, but um, if there's no money, you can't film. I mean, there was one day, and Cordy can tell you about this, and John, where we sat together, we didn't think we were going to be able to finish this film, and when we were at Ghost Ranch, and five of us investors got around the table and figured it out within a matter of a half hour. So, and during COVID, I mean, we literally pulled rabbits out of our hat when nobody else was producing. And the job that we did to make sure COVID stayed out, not only the Navajo Nation where we were at and everybody was working with us, but on our sets was, was magic. It all just came together. The investors who wanted to be part of it that had never been asked to the, to the dance before, because usually, you know, these filmmakers go after, high, you know, high rollers. And they don't look at the, I mean, we have students that invested in this movie. I mean, we really went from a 20, and Cordy, you're laughing, right? We That's went true, from yeah. 21 years old all the way up to probably 85. My mom might be the oldest investor, but we showed the mechanics on how it works and how the payback is there. And, and part of this story is not only John and Cordy, it's their mother and father that Vern and I believed in so heavily that we went out there and we helped cultivate uh, and a lot of credit has to go to Cordy and his mom, his dad, and John. Uh, we just we just took a lot of their lead and did some, you know, creative financing things that made sense to a lot of people. And people want to jump on. And not only that, they're looking forward to investing in this family for our next couple of ventures. So we're really excited about where we're placed right now. Linda, when you're out there, uh, you know, talking to people, did you what, what was your message? How did you sell the film? Did you have uh, was it a Native American film? Was it a, a female film? Was it a a tragedy? Oh, did uh, how do how did or was it a, a it. single message or different messages? It was different messages to different people and how it hit on their their heartstrings, if you will, and then on their financial strings and see how they, they could get involved. Um, we, you know, it, it's interesting when we look back at the evolution of this, because, you know, Cordy was right. There was like four or probably five stops, go stop, go stop, you know, in the last three years. Oh. Um, yeah. And, um, I, I think we should do a movie on just that. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's coming. Really help independent, I know it would really help independent filmmakers because I think like John Soshi there, John has great material. I, I, I sat with him. We looked at his film and his shorts. I mean, everybody should be able to tell a story if they're able to tell a story. And that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother thing. But Vern and I really want to jump in that arena too, because, you know, Native American stories are not told like they should be out there. You know, young Hispanic women, um, African-American, transgender, you can go through the issues and, and Vernon, uh, and I'm sorry, the Voorhees brothers, they, we're going to choose to, to tell the truth on things, right? Uh, our next film is uh, also going to be by a female uh, antagonist. I mean, so that those true stories need to be held out there because there's young girls, just like the Supreme Court, our new first black Supreme Court justice, they need to hear it. If you look at the world, it's changing and everybody wants to be a part of that. So it's easy to sell, be a part of this movie when people see themselves in this movie, whether it's a female tone or she couldn't do something, whether it was in uh, Navajo Nation where they just wanted to show it is respect of the dead. You know, the Hispanic culture, a lot of people the same way. That was so important in this film. And uh, please, people, do not 
underestimate how much care and love we put into making sure we preserve those things the proper way um, right. uh, because none of us take that lightly. Linda, was there, a, and we'll move on to another topic here in just a second, but uh, you're, you're talking about the, your, your husband, the, the money is the thing, uh, and you, there were four or five stop and go points. Uh, what, was there a moment uh, or some scenes or some situations where uh, Mr. Voorhees wanted to do something as a director and I had to have six of these or 10 of those? And, oh, absolutely. Uh, okay. Oh, and yeah, you yeah, said, uh, I don't I think so. <laughs> and uh, we can hold it. Uh, let's well, take a little yeah, break yeah, while it, we sort this out. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, it, it was good when I was with Vernon because I could pull him back a little bit because he was thinking about other people's money. That's, the, <laughs> that's our job. That's our job is to think about other people's money. It really is. And we want to respect that. But he, Cordy's the artist. He will always go for the next shot. Always, always, always. But as we started growing together, he started getting it. And he, and he is expert. He's an expert at what he does. Him and John have an eye. They do this. And I, we are just in awe of him. And we sh wish we could give him a boatload of millions of dollars. But we don't have that. We only have X amount. And remember, my husband said that is, you know, it's all we got. It's what we got to do. So yeah, uh, and you know what? We follow uh, Cordy and his, his brother into deep waters because I know they're going to do what they need to do on this planet, and we're going to keep on helping them. But we will, we will, we will put a we will put a life vest on him so he doesn't swim out there and get eaten by the shark. So you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta pull back. Well, I, I, I think that one of the funny things I read about uh, you, you talk about the weather and uh, and Mr. President Nez uh, when he showed up on the set, he had two or three. Uh, underwear garments, uh, you know, heating units to keep him. So there must have been some discussion about how many of these do we have to bring on the set? You know, isn't, oh, isn't one enough? I mean, <laughs> that, that is that is funny. Well, let me, uh, another, we got just a hundred things to discuss uh, and uh, time is uh, already uh, looming. But uh, one of the things we need to get into uh, is in the making of this is how, okay, we have the script, we have this, we have that, uh, it, it, without, being too eloquent on this, it's the, it's the Navajo issue. How do we, um, because it's 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 not the film is not just about Anne and Earl and you know some of those issues. It's about uh, the Navajo and many of the things you've talked about. And so, and this played out. And this is of course about the making of the casting. So how did maybe some of these things come into play during the casting process? You wanted uh, authentic voices, language, um, and you, you, the actors were great. The performances were unbelievable, including Mr. Nez in his, his debut role. How did that in the making of uh, come into play? Yeah, I can mention uh, briefly, it was so important. And we were, first of all, really well supported by our local casting directors in New Mexico, Jennifer Swallenberg and Lori Latham. Uh, and all of their folks, uh, we, a world-class team we had in New Mexico. Uh, we were really, really lucky, but that expanded into uh, an even broader team of our Navajo crew who came in and, and helped support the movie, also on the casting front too. Um, so yeah, John, it was it was a really serious process. The the um, the bottom line, we mentioned it last night, is that you know any Navajo character in the movie was going to be played by a Navajo actor, right? If we had Navajo language in the film, it was going to be period Navajo language, and uh, we just just took that from, from the beginning and just tried to stick to it as much as possible. We talked about it briefly last night, but it was really unique with Wes Studi. We had the opportunity to bring him into the film and we were fortunate that there was literally only one um, ethnically ambiguous uh, Native American character in the film who wasn't uh, directly uh, Navajo. So that was an opportunity for us to put Wes in there in, in his, uh, with his Native heritage as Cherokee and then, and then have that crossover in the story, which was a, which was a real uh, opportunity for us. So yeah, it was serious. And, and we got great support um, because I think universally people saw that, you know, this is a direct adaptation of this true story. We are representing this in the truest sense of the Ann Morris um, experience. And we did not want to deviate. And, uh, you know, we were not, we were not at all interested in sensationalizing the cultural elements um, that are associated with, with archeology span and, and this part of the world. We wanted to really just play it as straight as possible. And I think it, it came across uh, well in the script and that's what got a lot of these actors on board. And just being able to go to these locations too. I mean, actors always love to be in real locations. We see so often, and, and John could, could uh, talk about this, you know, so many films are filmed against a green screen or in, in computer generated environments these days. 
this was during the COVID pandemic. People definitely wanted to be outside in natural environments whenever they could. And being in these extraordinary places, I mean, who wouldn't want to want to participate? So that was why we were very, very lucky in that regard. Um, and that was a big, big part of it. In your directing approach, uh, Corte, um, uh, how would you, how did you handle these different uh, actors? And uh, you've got uh, some pretty professional Hollywood A-listers. You have some people just beginning. You have you have a President Nez from Navajo Nation who probably yeah. wanted to do things his way. And uh, you might have had to say, no, we, uh, well, he was we great. do it my way. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll, I'll say right work? now, it was, an, <laughs> it was just such a huge honor for us to have the president in the film. And it was such a great collaboration with his team. We were all trying to figure out his character together. <laughs> but it was this great, you know, it was this really fun experience. And the script, I'll just mention briefly, we had to make a lot of adjustments during the shooting of this movie due to the pandemic. It was very difficult. We talked about it last night. Um, you know, you can't make a historical drama at this level without a lot of support. It takes a village to do this kind of movie. Maintaining um, the uh, the consistent, you know, uh, in, you know, atmosphere of the film. I'll just to support Linda. You know, we all believe that artists need constraints because it forces the art to be as specific as possible, right? Uh, my brother uses a great analogy about the Italian Renaissance and why, you know, the art was so beautiful during that period because it was so specific, right? You'd have patrons who would say you have to fit this specific scene into this specific window in this church and it's got to be this time of day with patrons in it. And when you make it that specific, and this is where the storyboarding comes in, it just makes it so much better. So, but yeah, working with the talent was was incredible. The, the, the cast... Um, was really excited about the opportunity because number one, none, you know, very few of them, international talent hadn't made a movie in New Mexico before or been to these Southwestern locations. So they had a lot of just general enthusiasm about, you know, being out on Navajo Nation and, and being with, in these incredible places. Um, but it was a challenge, my challenge, John, just to answer your question was, you know, I was producing while directing a lot and I was really well supported by my brother and by our team. Uh, but it was it was a challenge with um, just honestly having to having to really maneuver every day. We had to have a plan A, B, C, and D, and we would often have to do plan D. Uh, weather became a major factor too. We were shooting a rainstorm with with rain towers and floods at Red Rock, and then a real storm showed up, which shut our set down. So it was like it was something else, right? Um, but just you know your ability to adapt. And, and, you know, always trying to stay as true to your vision, but being able to adapt is the central element you have to have as a disciplined filmmaker, because it's way more important to keep shooting however you need to shoot than to lose a day, especially with what Linda was just mentioning with how expensive doing a union production um, is, uh, because at this level it is union and it is, it's a very expensive process and you just, you have to be able to move as quickly as possible through it um, and, and, and adjust however you can, yeah. President Nez, would you like to comment on your experience as, a, as an actor and what you saw on the set and just uh, things that you took away from this experience? Well, I, I guess my, my debut, you know, volunteered my time. And uh, I don't think I was too picky. I know that there was some cultural sensitivity that I know we're, we're a very diverse nation and Dr. Uh, Jumbo Finch knows that. And we just have to be very careful because there, there's a lot of different beliefs uh, on the Navajo Nation, and one of those, you know, we had to kind of uh, change up a little bit so that uh, it'll stay true to uh, our way of life teaching. And um, you know, I, and I think being in the in this world premiere last evening, we we actually uh, shared uh, some of our pictures on set uh, and on our website, on our Facebook page, uh, some of the behind the scenes. Uh, pictures of that day and it was one day I know they wanted me to get there a couple of days but you know I have to run a nation I wasn't able to go out go back out the second time around but um, uh, the, the just experiencing that that uh, uh, first day it was pretty cold uh, I can uh, I relate to the warmers uh, and uh, you know it was just a, a great day a great cast uh, and I actually uh, just had an awesome day with uh, uh, the character Ann Morris there and uh, you know, with our way of life teaching and doing our prayers. And I think that was one thing, and I'll end with this, one, one thing that was highlighted last evening is that uh, that is the reason why 
Navajos don't mess around with uh, the Anasazis, you know, because you can bring sickness on yourself and on, on your family. And I think that was one of the, one of the highlights from uh, Corte last evening, you know, maybe, maybe that was one of the reasons why, uh, you know, people get sick uh, that don't get uh, their spiritual cleansing after hanging around those types of areas. And, you know, President, uh, President Finch, chapter President Finch, uh, absolutely knows all about that. You know, when we're growing up as kids, we're, we're always been told, you don't go to that, you, you stay away from that because you will bring harm to yourself or even harm to your family. And that was portrayed uh, perfectly last, e last evening in the film by that, that older lady, the, the grandma there. Uh, that, that's kind of that tough love teaching that we get as, uh, as young people. You know, grandma was really giving it to uh, um, uh, the, the people there uh, in that film. So true, so true. Many powerful scenes, absolutely. Uh, let me uh, ask one last question and I'm gonna turn it over to our audience. And that last question is uh, when, uh, when Mr. Corhi said, uh, that's a wrap, what was it like on the set? John, Linda, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember uh, which, which rap uh, we, we want to call us the ultimate there were a couple, rap, but John, there were probably three raps, but no, sorry. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting. It's an, I'll, I'll just say just say this too, um, and and I, I want to tie a couple of themes together here in terms of what we've all created um, together. Uh, it it does it's the analogy is made to giving birth to something. Um, you know, you you work really really hard, and it's your it's your protected story that you're bringing out into the world, um, and there's a sense of um, sort of uh, like, you know, you're, you're nurturing the story until it's strong enough to sort of go out there and, and, and live on its own. And that's what we're doing with premiering the film and then, and then showing the film around the world is that the, the film gets to sort of uh, fly out of the nest and, and, and be out in the world. So it's, it, does, it is a very emotional experience um, when you finally sit on top of all the mountain of struggle and work that has gone into creating something. Um, I wanna say too that, um, with the generosity that the president gave us with his time, um, the the creation of art requires time, and you have to sort of allow the creativity to come out. And the president was very generous when we were filming with him on the day that we were filming, um, where we could actually uh, he gave us the time to actually have the art come out in the performance, um, and we were all really uh, just so pleasantly surprised, frankly, at, at how, uh, how well it turned out um, and just really contributed to a very important element of the story. So the whole uh, process of making a movie is, is very challenging and very emotional and creative and uh, intellectual, but by the end of it, you just feel like you've created something, you get put it out in the world and uh, other people can, can benefit from it. So that was my experience when we um, finally finished um, what was a very long journey for all of us. Yeah, and I would say I was just exhausted. I mean, I've gone through basic training and advanced training in the military, and it felt like there were some days we didn't get to bed until three in the morning. And just the excitement, because every day would bring a new challenge where Vernon and I would have to get on the phone and find another investor, because we knew it was that detrimental within that week. And John, you can talk to this. It could be like, we need X amount by four days from now, and if we don't have it in the bank in two X, we can't produce anymore. I mean, when you look at the backfield of what it takes to do a movie, whether it's bringing in, um, you know, union teamsters to bring the water tanks in for the scenes, for the water scenes, or saying, hey, listen, we got to give the union guys a break. They need to break at a certain time or we're going to be fine. You know, so for Vernon and I in the backfield, we tried, and John, we tried to leave the pressures off of Corte so he could do what he needed to do because he's brilliant at it. But in the backfield, it was up and down. And some days it was like five up and downs, happy we did it. And then we'd be on the floor like, oh my gosh, we got to do it over again tomorrow. Or we had moves here. We were able to save money there, you know? So yeah, it felt like basic training. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's go to a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> one is, uh, uh, this is to everyone. I missed last night's screening. How can I see the movie? Will it be shown again? Yeah, absolutely. We're just starting our festival uh, tour. We're going to have multiple film festivals this year. So there's plenty of opportunities to see it at these festivals. And then the movie uh, will be doing its um, theatrical and, and streaming release a little later in the year. 
Uh, and right now, the best way to get information on the film is uh, either on our website at firstlinefilmsnm.com or IMDb. And our screenings are, are going to be publicly announced every month. Uh, so we'll have more festival announcements very shortly. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question to everyone. What obstacles did you endure while filming? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I, Cordy, you've, you've mentioned this a couple of times, but ahead, uh, health and safety was, was Big just the, yeah. the beginning, middle and end of every conversation. Um, and I think that, you know, it was really, we had a choice to make about, um, and, and this speaks to, uh, uh, what Roseanne was actually speaking about, about everyone's life coming to a stop when the pandemic started. Um, and you know that just that's so painful for for so many people for their businesses and their lives. And we we proceeded with making the movie because we knew that because we were so small, relatively speaking, you know, we are an independent film. And so at most we had 140 people on our busiest days. And then on some of our more pinpoint days, we were down to a crew of 30 or 40. Um, we knew that we could keep a crew and everybody around us safe. Um, and as we mentioned, going in and out of Navajo Nation, which was especially impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, um, that, 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 uh, you know, this was before we had vaccines. This was, this was, you know, we were all outside wearing masks 24 uh, seven, sanitizing everything. And, um, everybody took it very seriously. And, and Linda has mil military experience here and, and, and she can attest to this, you know, you treat it like a military operation. You got to make sure that everybody is taken care of to get in and out of location safely, um, that everybody's rested. Um, it's really quite a, an operation. And um, you know, the pandemic just added a, uh, an extra flavor of, of challenge to an other, otherwise very difficult undertaking. John, uh, but did, safety was the most important thing. John, did anyone actually get sick on set? We did not have a single case of transmission on set. We're very um, uh, proud of that. Um, when we were filming, of course, when you know, people go home for the holidays, there you know, were course cases where people did get COVID. Um, we did not have a single transmission on Kate uh, oh. on set. Um, and so, and that, that just speaks to the discipline that we had. And again, this is, this is prior to vaccines this is prior to what we really knew about the virus um, and how it was transmitted. Um, so uh, yeah, we kept everybody safe. Other, other problems, uh, <clears throat> Rosanna, from your POV, what, what were the major challenges that you faced? A few of the challenges with the Chinle chapter area is we had um, we've had we have a lot of community members, um, a lot of our elderly and um, elderly population, those that still reside near around the canyon rim. Um, I know there was some concerns in regards to having outsiders come onto property in the area, but you know we had to provide that reassurance, and that's where uh, Corti and his team they were able to provide that. Um, additional security and protection for the people, having them understand that, yes, we are going to wear our masks. Yes, we are going to do our testing. And yes, we're going to be contained within our location at the hotel. So those, those, those minor factors that we may see, those are the greatest contributions that were made to the community, just providing that reassurance that, yes, we are safe. And yes, we are helping our people. And yes, we're documenting a film to tell our history. So I think it was it was a lot of obstacles in that factor, but overall we were able to comfort a lot of the people and the members, having them know those things are available for them. And we are double checking and reassuring from our end that we're being safe 100% on site. And just having the timeline shared, having them understand where they're gonna be, who's gonna be assisting. And also we had a lot of great partnerships with um, our tours group and also the national parks. Um, we had a lot of various departments that did assist to ensure that we are, we are ensuring the people are safe. And I, um, I just can't say any more, but the Voorhees brothers did very great in ensuring all those protocols were followed through. I'd like to ask uh, President Naz and John, uh, uh, Zoe, um, what was it that convinced you that this was going to be okay, that this whole project? Now, the, the Voorhees brothers could charm uh, anybody into anything. I mean, these guys are pretty, pretty slick, and they, they, they got it down. They are. But, you know, John, you mentioned, you know, in your bio, you, you've seen a lot of production up there uh, that just did not pan out well uh, for the Navajo. And so what was it that, and you mentioned that there you got kind of a check.